Okay, meanwhile, on Sunday, the National Weather Service had to issue a statement correcting the president's claim that the state of Alabama was at risk from Hurricane Dorian. And yet on Monday, Trump insisted on Twitter that his claim had been true. And then when the president today held a briefing on the storm in the Oval Office, he showcased the map you're seeing here, this map from last Thursday, showing the projected path of the storm. Now, this map he showed today appeared to be edited by hand with a Sharpie marker. It shows that someone seems to have extended the region impacted by Dorian West, at least potentially impacted, to include Alabama. We don't know exactly what happened here, who drew that line, exactly what's going on. But here is what the president said when asked about the altered map later today. I know that Alabama was in the original forecast. Uh, they thought it would get it as a piece of it. It was supposed to go. Actually, we have a better map than that, which is going to be presented where we had many lines going directly, many models, each line being a model, and they were going directly through. And in all cases, Alabama was hit, uh, if not lightly, in some cases, pretty hard. That map that you showed us today looked like it almost had like a Sharpie. Right? I don't know. I don't know. Now, defending the president, the White House tonight released a map that they say was given to the president on Sunday, showing the hurricane's cone of uncertainty overlapping very slightly with the state of Alabama. Additionally, the president tweeted out a map dated from a week ago showing the various paths the hurricane could have taken. I want to bring in Jonathan Lemire, White House reporter for the Associated Press. Um, Jonathan, I think not a topic anybody expected this morning we would be talking about um, the basic question here, we say it appears somebody took a Sharpie and, and drew an addition to the cone here to send it into Alabama. Have you been able to get anything through reporting about what, what might have happened here? President Trump is very fond of Sharpies. and Reportedly, he himself made the alteration of the map in the hours before this briefing in the Oval Office. So let, let's back up a step here and talk about why, the, while this, on one hand, this is sort of an undeniably funny event, it, it does matter. It is a serious thing. President's words matter. You know, what the president says or tweets can move markets, can rattle global capitals, and can really frighten the residents of a state who they believe, who might then believe they're in the path of a dangerous hurricane. And in this case, this hurricane was never any really threat to Alabama, certainly not after, you know, a day or two of uncertainty from the National Weather Service. So what, what happened is, as you just walked through the chronology, the president tweeted out that Alabama was in the path. The National Weather Service had to release a rather unprecedented statement correcting the president, saying that Alabama was not in any danger. And then we've seen the president double and now triple down. So in the Oval Office today, he showed reporters that map, which was with the Sharpie alteration, suggesting that Alabama had been at risk, defending his original tweet. Uh, this is time and time again, we see this from the president, that he's refusing to acknowledge any mistake. He, even a, even a, a relatively minor one, uh, you know, certainly he could just say, well, I was going off of bad information or old, outdated information. Well, could have, could have even it. said, look, maybe there was a misunderstanding here. It looked like the storm, as I was understanding it, might brush Alabama, sure. might come close. I think that's a, a reasonable thing in any situation. <laughs> no question. Not and, to end up here, though. No, and any president, of course, is supposed to be, especially post-Katrina, is very mindful of the response to a hurricane. Uh, we saw how George W. Bush in 2005 really faltered, you know, in terms of what happened with Hurricane Katrina hitting the Gulf Coast, presidents are very mindful of trying to get out ahead of it and then respond appropriately after the storm hits. But in this case, once again, he sort of made the incident about himself. And thankfully, the United States has largely, at least so far, skirted the storm, devastating the Bahamas. It has, the impacts here haven't been that bad. But we've seen the president spend precious time trying to relitigate this relatively silly matter, and including tonight putting out a tweet uh, from a, a state, a Florida state source, saying that showed this path more than a week old. So th this is the, what you're talking about now is right the map there. we have on the screen right here. This is, this is what he tweeted out within the last hour? That's right. And it's an August 28th map, which he is using to defend a September 1st tweet. And that tweet is from the Florida Water, the, this map here is from the Florida Water Management District website. And it says on there that information from the National Hurricane Center supersedes anything you see on this map. And as the fine print also reads, uh, it says, if anything on this graphic causes confusion, ignore the entire product. And I think it's safe to say we've had nothing but confusion about the president handling the storm. Let me, let me just ask you, folks 
in the White House, folks around this administration, do they have any reaction to something like this? The people we've talked to tonight, uh, not much yet in terms of sort of a sense of a shrug and, well, there he goes again, in terms of the president being very defensive, not acknowledging, uh, being able to acknowledge any sort of mistake, being very thin-skinned about media criticism, and certainly that's how this was brought to light, his initial mistake, because there was a report suggesting that, you know, pointing out that his mistake, that Alabama was never under any real threat, uh, but it, uh, to a broader point and why this does matter. In addition, not only do a president's words carry weight, but it shows you there's no one in the White House who can get, a, get in the way of something like this and say, sir, this might be a bad idea. Like, this isn't worth your time and energy to, to double and then triple down on what was a, probably an innocent mistake, a bad piece of information or an outdated piece of information. There's no one there who can say to him, sir, this is a bad idea. There are no guardrails left. There are very few people in that White House who have any standing or any courage or any willingness to step up to him. And maybe this is a trivial matter, but they also don't on rather important ones. Okay, Jonathan Lemire, <laughs> thank you very much. Again, on a topic I don't think we expected we were going to be discussing. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.